Welcome to PC Woods Kids Tech Talk. Today we're looking at part two of my review of the Sapphire AMD Radeon HD 6950. In part one, I showcased the card, we did an unboxing, and went through some of the specs. Today we're going to do some benchmarking in part two. Now, looking at the card itself here installed in my test system, here are the specs, so that way you guys know exactly what I'm running this in. And uh, basically, this card um, I would say is almost as strong or as strong as a HD 5870 in some respects. So if you look at the stats here and you see, okay, how does this uh, fit in in this chart? You can see how it fits in there with all those specs and also when it comes to the GTX series of the NVIDIA cards, it's halfway in between their uh, GTX 460 and the 570. Now, looking at the specs here in Windows 7 and GPU Z, you can see all the specifications that I mentioned in part one. Now now showing here and uh, this is a very strong card it's got huge bandwidth 2 gigs of GDDR5 so you can have your affinity no problems and super high res tons of shaders okay 1440 is tons of shaders and of course a decent GPU clock and memory clock with lots of room for uh, overclocking it further actually from the default so this is the defaults with the fan running on auto and uh, you can see the temperatures obviously if you increase the fan speed the temperatures will go down but of course the noise levels will go up I found that uh, having it at uh, around 40 percent fan speed it was actually still pretty quiet at uh, the default fan speed you can see here the RPM is actually very low and whisper quiet here are the temperatures at idle and full load for your information and uh, now let's get into some benchmarks, okay? So looking at the benchmarks, I always start off with 3D Mark Vantage. There's the GPU score at defaults, so that way you know exactly what we're getting and comparing it against other uh, GPUs, other graphic cards that I've installed in this system. And you can see also how those scores compare to the HD 6950 from Sapphire. Now, obviously there's lots of room for overclocking as you can see, but before we get into that, Let's look at some more benchmarks here from Haven. You can see at the two resolutions, the frames per second, the minimum, the max. Haven uh, benchmark 2.1 is really a DirectX 11 benchmark tessellation. It really puts the card to the test when it comes to DirectX 11. Cinebench puts the uh, GPU to the test for rendering and you can see here how the uh, system that I have ranked and did very well in the scores considering that it's a six core um, CPU running a new 6900 series card from Sapphire. You can see the scores that it got there rendering in Cinebench, which is terrific. Very, very fast results. I don't think anything can touch that at this point. And uh, also, looking at how much does the um, new GPU, the 6900 series, alleviate uh, the CPU from processing. So if you're doing video conversion, for example, and you enable the uh, GPU now to do most of the processing of the conversion or the rendering, does the CPU still um, process high? Well, no, it doesn't. You can see there that enabling that, it actually does use the CPU less. If I don't enable the hardware encoding, the hardware processing of the GPU, then of course, now we're going to see the CPU utilization skyrocket and go high because now the CPU is actually doing most of the conversion and the rendering instead of the um, the GPU right instead of the 6900 series card so that's one good thing about the 6900 series how it enables that and the parallel processing features terrific now the other thing that I wanted to talk about is the games now looking at here at Battlefield Bad Company 2 you can see the two resolutions everything always maxed out when I do my reviews okay I don't run things on low or medium or no AA because that's not fair you gotta max things out if you really truly wanna see the card at work okay so here are the different um, resolutions and the frames per second that I've been getting at default clocks and also some results at um, overclocked okay because overclocked you do get a few more frames per second obviously depending on the game you'll get more and other games you get less okay but I've tried a different variety of games so that way you guys can see the um, the, the uh, frames per second and uh, not just the minimum and the max but also the average which is very important now overclocking here we got some overclocking using the catalyst control center the ATI overdrive utility unfortunately was capped and you cannot overclock it more than 840 for the 
core and 1325 for the memory. So um, what I did is I installed the Sapphire Trix utility instead. Okay. Now keep in mind that now with these new cards, there's a power tune technology in there, which is basically a GPU throttling technique that conserves energy and um, you know down cores or I shouldn't say down core, but just decreases the the GPU utilization and and the maximum. I like to max everything out when it comes to um, the power tune. So that way my overclocking does not uh, get inhibited. And here you can see that um, with the Sapphire utility, Sapphire has this Trix overclocking utility, I am able to overclock this beyond what the ATI overdrive can do. Okay, I can still control the fan, I can still uh, control uh, the GPU and everything, and I got terrific results overclocking in many different games. So definitely a great card, the 6900 series from Sapphire. Definitely recommend it. And uh, I'd like to thank Sapphire for providing it. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.